Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In today's video we're going to be working on this Physics 7b Momentum Practice Problem. This is actually part 2 of the uh, Dr. Brown and Martin McFly Practice Problem, so if you haven't seen part 1 yet, I strongly recommend that because uh, what I did is split a quiz, an actual quiz, 7b quiz, into two parts in order to be able to do them um, sort of separately. So if you haven't seen that yet, highly recommend watching that. Also, as usual, a like and subscribe really helps these videos. So this is a problem statement um, right here. So in part one, Marty McFly basically uh, found a way to get into the future. So now he's in the future. Um, so now that he is in the future, Marty gets into a traffic accident because someone called him a chicken. So he is initially traveling um, north at 30 meters per second and he hits a truck which uh, was going west 10 meters per second and after the collision we have some final information which is that the uh, DeLorean is going west at 30 meters per second and basically the exercise is to draw an accurate momentum chart to represent this problem so as you can see I basically just copied all of the information that we have over here for the problem so final is that he is going west and yes that is going to be all of the information that i need to solve the problem so as you can see i've copied all of the information please uh, feel free to pause the video in order to give it a try yourselves so let's just get started so basically all we have to do in order to finish this problem is uh, fill in this momentum chart so let's just get started some things we can actually figure out right away because we do have both of the masses the car and the truck and we actually do have uh, the information, information initial and final for the car. So let's just go ahead and multiply some numbers together in order to get this rolling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and figure out the car's initial and final momentum. I just don't see why not. I have all of the information that I, um, that I need. So let's see. Also, uh, the initial momentum of the car is mass car velocity initial of the car. Oh, I guess that that is something that we will need to do. So these three vectors right here, um, we have them in magnitude and direction. But what I like to do, especially since I have to fill in this momentum chart, is separate them into X and Y components. Um, so let's see. It is going to be very easy though, because um, for example, this initial velocity is 30 going north. So that is just going to be zero and 30 meters per second like this. Um, and then the final for the car is um, 30 meters per second going west. So west is a negative X axis. So this is just going to be negative 30, zero meters per second. Well, let's just go ahead and do this one as well. Velocity initial for the truck is equal to 10 going west. So that is going to be negative 10 and 0 meters per second. So now that that is done, I can just multiply the mass. So I will be multiplying 1,000 times 0. That is going to be equal to 0. And then 1,000 um, times 30. That is going to be 30,000. We should not use commas here. Um, kilograms, meters per second. Uh, I can also just get the final one. I don't see why not. So let's just go ahead and get that final one. So the final one for the car is just mass car B final car. So that is just going to be equal to um, a thousand, which is the mass times B times negative 30. So that is negative on the x-axis and then for the y-axis um, it is zero so that's zero times a thousand that is going to be equal to zero kilograms meters per second um, so let's just go ahead and copy that information so for the initial you know what I think that just to make things simple I'm just going to go ahead and all of this momentum chart is just going to be times a thousand so that I don't have to keep writing zeros over and over and over again. So just using that conversion, this is just going to be 0 and 30. So it's just going to be an arrow going up like this. And using this conversion, this vector is just going to be negative 30, 0. Yeah, this is definitely going to make it easier. Otherwise, I'll be writing zeros all over the place. Um, OK, so we have these two. And we can easily fill in this. But let's just hold on 
um, for a second. I want to figure out the truck situation first because I'm already multiplying stuff. So P initial for the truck is just going to be mass truck initial velocity of the truck. So if I just multiply, uh, this is 4,000. So it's 4,000 times negative 10. So that is um, negative 40,000. And then 4,000 times zero is going to be um, equal to zero. So there we go. So his initial is just a negative 40, zero. So that is just an arrow that looks like this. Okay, so this is basically all of the information that we have on the problem. Now we actually have to fill in the momentum chart. So the first thing that we can do is, because we know that on a momentum chart, all of the rows, all of the columns and all of the rows have to add up. Uh, we can basically start by filling in this, um, this space right here. I honestly don't see why not. So let's just go ahead and do that. So if I want to fill this in and this plus this has to be equal to final, delta is just final minus initial, right? So final minus initial, negative 30 minus zero, that is just going to be negative 30. And final minus initial, zero minus 30, that is going to be equal to negative 30 as well. So this is just going to be an arrow going west and down. There we go. Now the next thing that we can actually do, and it will be sort of like straightforward, is to just figure out this part right here, because I can at this point just add these two vectors together. Um, so this plus this has to be equal to this. So zero plus negative 40 is gonna be equal to negative 40. Uh, 30 plus zero is just gonna be positive 30. So this is gonna be an arrow that looks um, like this a little bit to the west and a little bit to the north. There we go. So that solves this problem. So now the next thing that we wanna do is fill in this part over here. Uh, remember this part on a momentum chart is reserved for uh, external forces uh, because it basically relates external forces to the net impulse of the entire system. In this particular case, there is no mention of any uh, external forces. There is no mention of friction, no mention of anything like that. So because there is no mention of any external force that could be acting on our system, we're actually gonna put a zero here. But remember, this is because the problem does not state that we have any external forces that we need to you know, be concerned with. So now we can just make another vector addition and just do this plus this is equal to this. So negative 40 plus zero is going to be equal to negative 40. Uh, positive 30 plus zero is just going to be 30. So this is again just an arrow. A little bit to the west, a little bit to the north like this. So now we basically just need to complete um, this space and this space by just completing the columns right here. So this plus this has to be equal to this. So negative 30 plus what is gonna be equal to negative 40? That is gonna be equal to negative 10. Negative 30 plus negative 10 is equal to negative 30. Zero plus what is gonna be equal to zero? That is gonna be 30 right here. And now we can actually just complete this going down or we can complete it going like this and you'll see that we're gonna get the exact result. Uh, this plus this has to cancel out. So this is just gonna be plus 30 and plus 30. And as you can see, negative 40 plus 30 is equal to negative 10. Zero plus 30 is equal to 30. So it needs to add up. Like that is a necessity of these momentum charts. And it really is the reason why they are so useful. Um, so this is just gonna be some arrow a little bit to the west and a little bit up like this. And this basically completes our problem. The question was basically to just create a complete momentum chart. This momentum chart is already complete. Uh, just remember that for the sake of keeping them, uh, things simple, I decided to just um, divide everything by a thousand so that I wouldn't be writing zeros all over the place. Uh, but anyway, so this basically finishes our problem. So I hope that this problem was useful to you. Uh, you know, feel free to give it a try by yourselves. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.